We are back and we are joined now by Professor Francis Boyle, human rights lawyer who has previously argued and won in front of the International Court of Justice, professor of international law at the University of Illinois College of Law, and author of many books uh, on these topics as well. Professor, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, thank you very much for having me on my best to your listening audience. Uh, of course. Um, well, I'm sure they appreciate that because we're, we're very happy to have you um, as we kind of flesh out this news that we've gotten um, over the past few days that South Africa is um, charging Israel with crimes of genocide uh, in front of the International Court of Justice. But let's start, I guess, from the beginning. The, uh, the International Court of Justice, sometimes, you know, colloquially called The Hague because of its location there in the Netherlands. What is the ICJ's function um, and procedures as somebody who has argued and won in front of the ICJ? Uh, yes, it's called the uh, World Court, the International Court of Justice. It was originally founded in uh, 1921. Uh, and I was the first lawyer ever to win anything from the World Court uh, on the basis of the Genocide Convention. Uh, I sued Yugoslavia for the Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina and won two massive uh, orders of provisional measures of protection on behalf of the Bosnians against the Yugos to cease and desist from committing all acts of genocide against the Bosnians. This was the first time ever that uh, any lawyer had ever won two orders in the World Court since it was founded in 1921. In addition, I also uh, uh, convinced the prosecutor for the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia uh, to indict Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic for almost every crime in the ICTY statute, in two, including two counts of genocide, one for uh, genocide against uh, Bosnia in general, and the second for the uh, genocide at Srebrenica. Uh, he was put on trial in The Hague after the close of the prosecution's case he filed a motion to dismiss all charges. In a decision, the uh, tribunal uh, dismissed his, uh, denied his motion, and ruled that there was enough uh, evidence to convict him on all charges, including the two counts of genocide, and that he should then proceed to uh, open his defense, whereupon he died, and that was that. So that's my uh, experience dealing with genocide. Uh, based on no, based on my no, yeah. review based on my review of the uh, documents filed by the Republic of South Africa, the application of request for provisional measures of protection, uh, protection, I predict that they will win an order of provisional measures of protection on behalf of the Palestinians uh, uh, against uh, Israel. And that order would probably come down one week after the close of hearings at the end of next week, at least based on the uh, time frame I did uh, for Bosnia. So the time frame was quite short in, uh, in, in your work uh, with Bosnia. That is correct. My uh, hearings were on April 1 and April 2. And I won this uh, massive overwhelming order for Bosnia on April 8th. So my guess is we're, we'd be talking about one week after the uh, the hearings close next Friday. Which makes sense given, you know, the urgency of crimes of genocide that the ICJ would structure the process in such a way. That is correct. They're supposed to... Uh, deal with this matter uh, urgently, as urgently as possible. So um, how does this uh, charge differ from the war crimes charges that are currently in front of the International Criminal Court? If you could give our audience a sense of the difference in those two bodies and why this is a uh, 
seemingly from my reading um a a process that's going to more likely yield uh some relief for the the palestinians who are undergoing um i mean unimaginable death and uh, horror at this moment yes um the international uh criminal court which is also located in the hague is rotten corrupt and despicable uh, after Operation Cast Lead in 2009, I advised the uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to accept the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court and uh, prosecute highest level officials of the Israeli government. That was 2009. Since then, 2009, the International Criminal Court has not lifted even one finger to help the Palestinians. Not one finger. And so for that reason, uh, all the death and destruction that has been inflicted uh, on the Palestinians um, are on the hands of the International Criminal Court. They have Palestinian blood on their hands, including the 30,000 dead Palestinians now. If they had acted after 2009 to start uh, indicting Israeli officials, I don't believe any of this would have happened. So for this reason, uh, uh, since the ICC has done nothing since 2009, uh, we launched a campaign uh, to take this matter to the uh, International Court of Justice that will act. What is the root of that corruption, as you describe? I mean, what what uh, is it is essentially the same kind of like Western bias that we see in the structure of uh, the, the United Nations and say the U.S. having veto power via the Security Council? Is it kind of something in that vein? Yes, the United States government puts uh, pressure on the ICC. And then in addition, its uh, primary funders there are European uh, NATO states. And of course, most of them uh, support the genocide that uh, uh, Israel has been inflicting on the Palestinians for quite some time. He who pays the piper calls the tune there at the ICC. Whereas at the uh, International Court of Justice, uh, its uh, expenses, salary, are paid out of the um, United Nations budget that is set by the General Assembly. Can, can you explain the historic significance of South Africa in particular bringing this case to the ICJ? Sure. The mere bringing uh, of this case, the filing, is a severe body blow against Israel to accuse it of genocide because the origins of the genocide convention came out of the Nazi Holocaust against the Jews. It's that simple. And, and, and would you also add that in the past, I mean, South Africa as an apartheid state was one of Israel's stronger allies uh, before, obviously, that that regime, you know, uh, the apartheid regime was was toppled. That's exactly uh, correct. The, Israel and the Zionists worked uh, hand in glove with the criminal apartheid regime in South Africa. Um, and in terms of this case in particular, you uh, believe that in the, uh, a short period of time, um, a few weeks at this point, once this this process concludes, that you believe that South Africa's case um, that, that they they will win uh, in the ICJ, or at least you know a, a charge will be le uh, levied against Israel. Um, I believe that uh, based on what my reading, but I am not a lawyer, that Israel has been committing crimes of genocide against the Palestinian people. Um, but from your legal expertise as a human rights uh, lawyer, wh why do you think that this case um, has, has so much merit? 
Well, as the case in, in the Bosnians, once I won that order from the world court, it was undeniable to the entire world that genocide was going on against the Bosnians by the Yugos, and the uh, world had an obligation to prevent that genocide. I believe the uh, same thing will happen here. If you read the uh, application and request for provisional measures uh, by the uh, Republic of South Africa, <clears throat> it's outstanding. Obviously put together by a team of first-rate uh, international lawyers. Indeed, it's better than what I did because I did it all by myself. Mm. I didn't have a, uh, a team of lawyers. I did the best I could as, uh, as one man. So here you have uh, an entire team of first-rate international lawyers uh, uh, working for uh, South Africa, and they put together really uh, outstanding uh, application uh, and requests for provisional measures of protection. So if I could uh, win those orders, those two orders all by myself, uh, I'm confident the uh, South African team is going to win.